Good afternoon. I think the jet lag has hit me, so uh, I hope I'm coherent. <coughs> Distinguished panelists, colleagues, friends, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to participate and uh, thank you for the kind hospitality of the two governments and also for the tremendous efforts of UNICEF and UN Women for bringing us all here today and for the important work that is to come in the next few months. Uh, I think this part three of today's dialogue might be the most important one yet. And uh, for months to come, we'll be really trying to think about how we address this uh, issue of inequalities. We have heard that uh, various dimensions of inequality cannot be addressed on a piecemeal basis, and that policies, programs, and interventions intended to reduce inequalities often only address the symptoms. <clears throat> That's why I think the synthesis report proposes some excellent key principles and recommendations to tackle the structural drivers that perpetuate inequalities. And Anurada has uh, outlined five of the proposals. <clears throat> I thought I'd just address briefly the first question. Um, this morning, there was mention of um, the ethical and the normative framework that has been changing. And uh, a fellow panelist also mentioned the need for attitudinal change. So I'd just like to build on that. I think, indeed, to truly realize equity and social justice, we need to go further. We need to go deeper. I think we can agree that inequalities are the result of prejudices and discrimination. And we are attached to tired conceptions of has and have-nots, of the North and South, of developed and developing. And these worn out dichotomies have resulted in the inequalities that we see today. Which means for true change to occur, it must begin at the most fundamental level of thought, attitude, and values. The transformational change that we all yearn will require not only structural change, but a fundamental change of the mind and the heart. One way to conceive of this transformation is through the lens of relationships. The challenge of inequality concerns itself, in essence, with the quality of relationships between individuals, between communities and nations. So we must be able to recognize the relationships of domination and exploitation and identify means by which more equitable arrangements can be established. The idea of equality that emerges from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and from the Millennium Declaration is, one, is not one of possessions or particular conditions but one that defines certain attributes of the human being, such as dignity, reason, conscience. Equality then is more than just a desirable condition to be achieved for the good of society. It speaks to those attributes that we share in common with all members of the human family. In the final analysis, the focus of efforts to address inequality should not be on creating e equality but rather on reflecting the equality that inherently exists in our social structures and processes. Thank you very much, and I look forward to the dialogue. Thank you very much. Um